YouTube. Hello. I'm just going to adjust that slightly. Bear with, bear with. Hi, I am live on YouTube and on Instagram. You know me. I like to up the ante every single time. Uh, bear with me. Completely new to me live streaming on YouTube. And it's really, really, really low down. So I'm just going to try and adjust that slightly while we wait for some people to come in. Could that work like that? Let me see. Uh, bear with me guys, one second. Could that work better? Hang on a sec. I'm really sorry. It, I thought I could do it that way and now it's in that way. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. Bear with me. Sorry, this is real life. This is what I'm like all the time. Hello! Hello, we're here. Oh, right, so today, thank you for joining me. Hello YouTube, not been on for a while and never done a live, so this is really scary, uh, but I'm doing it anyway. So if I'm looking here and here, that's why I'm doing two things at once. Uh, today, we're going to talk about my favourite subject, <clears throat> not just well-being, we're going to talk about something that is absolutely, totally key um, to well-being, and that is your routines and rituals <clears throat> and um, it, the secret to well-being and the secret to health lies in what we do every single day and the habits that we create and just before I um, set this up I actually found uh, my effort well I looked at my own affirmation card that I had done and obviously it's back to front for you guys and what it actually says is these are the habits I am creating to become my highest self. It's actually kindfully, um, kindly, kindfully. Uh, Elena Brower, my, my mentor, allowed me to use that as one of her quotes from her journals. That really sums up what this is about. <clears throat> I have a frog in my throat, excuse me. And um, it's really about creating those healthy habits on a daily basis. Uh, and I just want to talk to you about that today. So first of all, I'm going to talk to you about my own personal experience and what woke me up. The angle is so weird on YouTube. I'm sorry, it's distracting me. Uh, and then secondly, I'm going to give you some examples of my own like rituals um, and routines and some extra ideas for you. And then lastly, I've created a really like crazy simple table printout it's linked in my instagram what i'm going to do is attempt to kind of put it into my comments underneath this video on youtube um so let's get cracking i'm going to keep it as short as i can last week's was so long so i apologize for that uh, i'll try to be less loquacious is that the right word right let's try and keep it to 20 minutes uh so first of all if you don't know me i'm rachel uh, i'm a mum of three and when I, i'm 41 and a half now and when I turned 40, I was diagnosed with major depressive disorder. Uh, and that really was the best thing that ever happened to me. And be that's because it turned my life around, absolutely turned my life around. Um, so in a nutshell, um, in my 20s, I was like the crazy party girl. Um, and I was working in the creative industries and partying and it was all good and it was just like crazy and you know, that's life when you're 20. I don't regret anything, that was just how it was. And then my 30s were all about motherhood. I had my son when I was 30, my daughter when I was 32 and then my youngest when I was 38. <clears throat> and I found that transition really, really hard. Matrescence, I think they call it. Uh, and then it got to my 40s and it was kind of like, now what? Um, and I realised actually that I was pretty lost and I had everything and that kind of made it even worse for me. Like I had a beautiful house, an amazing husband, three beautiful kids, but I still felt really, really lost. Um, and the, the reason for that really is complex, <laughs> but um, I wasn't living consciously. I was kind of bouncing from one extreme to the other. I few people in my life have said to me that I <clears throat> have commented to me over the years like about the incongruency that I showed like one minute I was like this mom on YouTube making cakes and the next minute I was this kind of wild party girl and it really what I'm trying to get to here is that I had this really up and down identity and I think I had riotous fun, don't get me wrong. I also had crashing lows and I realised it was time to change. As I turned 40, that was like a new era to me. 
you know, you're halfway through your life probably, aren't you, if you're lucky. And you just, I just needed to turn that corner. So um, I wanted to be more balanced, but I had no real lasting structure in my life. Um, flux and ebb and flow is 100% part of life and I wholeheartedly embrace that, but I had no anchor <clears throat> and I found it really, really hard to live a balanced and structured life. Um, and I would try to put routines in place. And like one, what's really funny is one of my most popular videos, I'm trying to look at the camera instead of there, sorry, uh, is on YouTube is like a mummy morning routine. So people would watch that. And like, I remember my sister-in-law saying like, you're so good at routine and stuff like that. And I would say, well, yeah, I, um, you know, uh, I am, but I need to put a lot of work into that. And it's been a huge process. That was like one snapshot, but now I feel like my life is very, very anchored in routine and rituals through everything that I've learned. And that is providing such a level day-to-day um, -day experience for me. And it's really, really good for my mental health. Um, so what happened was in the past, I tried to put routines in place, but they didn't last because I wasn't in line. Why was that? because I wasn't in line, aligned with my values. I had no clue what my values were. That's a nice exercise to do. Um, and also I hadn't done the necessary work on a lot of the destructive behaviors that were causing this. This In my, in my life, that was alcohol, um, but in your life, it might be something else. Uh, so I needed to do the work before I could be more aligned and more stable and steady. So let's fast forward to now. So, um, yeah, I decided, like I say, at 40 to do a deep dive into well-being and that's what I've done over the last 18 months. I've trained as a holistic um, coach. I'm an essential oils educator. Um, I'm doing my yoga teacher training very soon. Um, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to take on some new hobbies. For me, this was an emergency. It was a life or death situation. I actually felt suicidal. I was that bad at times when I was depressed. Excuse me. That's someone just popping on. Um... And uh, it doesn't, you don't have to wait to, to improve your life and kind of be more anchored in ritual and routine. Please don't wait until you're like crying out for help like I was. But for me, that was a huge catalyst. It was like, I had no choice, I had to do this. But it's actually been the best thing that's ever happened to me. I'm touching the screen a lot, sorry, because it keeps going dark. Um, so self-care, I realized that self-care and mental health was my most important job. There's an Elizabeth Gilbert quote, you're probably familiar with it, and she says, um, you know, my mental well-being is my full-time job, writing is just a hobby, and that just clicks for me, that, that, is, that is exactly how I see it for myself. So everything else has to come second. Um, so meds, therapy, coaching, I also got sober, I got diagnosed with ADHD, people were surprised at that and they thought, oh, you're, you're really good at routine and structure and they didn't realise how much I actually struggled with routine and structure and, and, and ritual and those things that we're going to talk about today. And I've, so I've kind of become an expert in it because I had to, um, I had to, <laughs> and I had to really anchor myself and I had to do a lot of work on my own personal boundaries and on, on self-sabotaging. Um, but now I feel like I'm a good person to talk to people about it because I know exactly how hard it is. Um, yeah, so I had um, I had moments in the past of flow and moments of absolutely amazing ritual and routine. And, and that's probably when I used to share it and people used to go, you're so good at it. But you know what? Um, that was when a really good, uh, sorry, that's something that popped up. Um, a really good um, way of looking at that is my inner knowing would flash, would step would step up a lot of the time, but what was getting in the way of my inner knowing and my intuition um, of what I actually needed for me was alcohol, and for me not prioritizing self care, <clears throat> and that might be the same for you. So now I've eradicated those problems. I don't drink anymore. I'm really really good at self care. What I found is I'm very much able to be in the flow of structure, routine, and ritual. Um, I'm a very chaotic, creative person. I have ADHD, and and I and if you're familiar with Ayurvedic um, medicine, they have three doshas, and I'm very vata, <clears throat> which is like a very air, scatterbrain, creative, jump, jumping from one thing to the next. So I need that anchoring in routine very much. And people who are a Vata energy and a Vata dosha, Vata, V-A-T-A, um, are the people that need this most. 
Uh, so we are people who are creative and have a lot of energy and we need to be anchored down so we can be our truest self and so that we can step up for ourselves and our family. Um, yeah, so a little bit of Ayurveda, Ayurveda for you there. Um, I'm going to recommend a book at the end because that is beautiful on this subject in that area. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I always have a flipping frog in my throat on a Saturday. Maybe that's a psychological thing. So... Why does it matter? Why, why, why? Why do we care? Ritual and routine, who cares? Here's why it matters. You are a leader and I am a leader. And if you're a stay-at-home mum, if you're, you, you're an entrepreneur, it doesn't matter. You are a leader in your own life. If you have no kids, you're still a leader in your own life. Um, you know, structure and stability is what we all need. We need it in our own life. Our kids need it. Uh, maybe we manage a team at work and you can set that example for them. Um, it's about setting an example for other people and setting the tone. So in, our, in a family setting, I'm very much the emotional keeper of the family and as women, we just are, and that's often true in the workplace as well. Uh, and I realised that it was up to me to put these things in place to allow myself to blossom and to allow my family to blossom because leadership is all about structure and stability and uh, if we can provide those things, we can be amazing leaders to ourselves, leaders of our own lives and in our family lives and our work lives. Um, to be our most true and authentic selves, we need to strip back all of the clutter, all of the noise, all of the stuff we don't want to do and, get, and then that's when we get to the juice, the really good stuff, the stuff that represents where our values are. Imagine if you just focused entirely on those things, how fast-tracked a lot of the stuff would ha happen for you, how fast, how much faster you'd get to the things you actually want to be doing. You know, it's a very short life. I've always had this mindset, my, mind, my friends would tell you, I used to have it in quite a dangerous way where it would be quite throwaway, and I would say, come on, you got to do it, you only live once. I've always had that spirit. If you think about it in a healthy way, what that's about is like, don't waste time doing things that you don't want to do. Don't waste time being with people you don't want to be with. Uh, and that is all really part of the rituals and routines as well. <clears throat> so just a little thought here really is that when we're on holiday, often we feel out of sorts. I know I never sleep on holiday. Um, and that's because we're out of routine. Um, you know, animals, babies, we all need routine. I think if we're quite rebellious, um, someone saying hi there, hi. Uh, if, you know, it's, I can think of somebody I know and love dearly who is such a Vata personality, so creative and just fights this so much. And I think we get that a lot from children as well. Um, but here's the boring truth. Um, we all benefit from routine. Every single one of us benefits from ritual and routine, okay? Um, so we may fight it and the people that fight it often need it the most. Um, and so paradoxically, leading on from that, we also need um, flexibility. So it seems like a paradox. Like how can you have routine and rituals and also have flexibility? You can. And actually, it's really important that you do. Let's get real, because in family life, you can't be too rigid. That's the first thing that you learn, which is you can't like sometimes you just have to roll with it and adapt. And that's that skill of equanimity is something that. I've learned a lot recently uh, and it's that kind of equanimity means like poise and grace in the face of like stress and crap you know and that is something I was really bad at I was very much in a reactive place I had a lot of like unprocessed anger and I would flip like that to you know zero to a hundred and having equanimity is about having that space in your life where you can be flexible and it's such a female trait and just think in the world, if everybody had more for, more of that female trait, more of that equanimity, and we can build equanimity into our routines and rituals with self-care because that allows us to have that space and it actually calms our parasympathetic nervous system down. So things like yoga and meditation are so amazing for building that flexibility and grace into our rituals and routines. Um so, so what I try and do with terms of flexibility is I have like an 80-20 rule and I think it's such a good way to approach life. Like you might see some healthy food posted on Instagram, but I will never, ever pretend that I just eat healthy all the time. I have galaxy chocolate at night. 
it's not about being a robot, you know? Oh, I've paused on Instagram. Um, I'll carry on. Oh, I hope, I hope it comes back. Um, <clears throat> pause. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, I wonder if I change, yeah. Ah, here we go, we're back, we're back, we're back. I might hold it, because I think that might help. Hi, sorry, you guys, it paused. Uh, sorry, guys. Um, yeah, so 80-20 uh, rule. So at the weekends, I definitely try and roll with it more, um, and that fits. Like, just the weekend, just be a bit more flex, and then in the week, just be a bit more like, it's the week, time to get back to work type of thing. So as leaders, we just really need to design our lives to maximise joy and awareness and consciousness. And to get most out of our short, precious lives, it's really important to live as true and authentically as possible. Um, so a few little tips before I go on to actually the routines and rituals in my lives and some ideas. So the first tip is just cut out the negative and bring in the positive. Curate, curate, hard word to say, your life. So whether that's down to like changing the media that you consume, changing the books you read, the magazines you read, changing the newspaper, maybe throwing out the newspaper. Um, and also relationships, like are there some friendships and relationships you need to let go of? Are there some, even some familial relationships maybe you need to step away from? Uh, it, it can be painful, but also to move forward, I think it's also, it can be really necessary sometimes. Uh, so cut out the negative, bring in the positive. Um, so you lose stuff, but you gain stuff. Um, you know, at the minute, as I transition from kind of mummy blogger to well-being coach, I lose followers on Instagram all the time and I gain followers all the time. And it's like this kind of recalibrating. And if you can think of your life like that, you're recalibrating your life for the better because you're going to be more in tune, find your people, find your tribe. Just as a side note, there's that stat, that kind of, uh, stat is the wrong word, like there's a there's a thought, a saying that the five people you hang out with, you will become on an average um, in many ways in your life like them. You'll probably earn the same amount of money as the, the five people. You probably have the similar political views as the five people. So if you want to change up your vibe and change up your life, it's okay to make new friends. You don't have to throw the, all your old friends in the bin. That's not what I'm saying. It's like, if, for instance, in sober circles, it's really, really important for me, for example, I adore all my friends that drink and they do drink, but it's really been really important for me to make some sober friends. And that's a really good positive way of thinking about, you know, bringing in the new is a really nice way to think about your rituals and routines. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, you lose stuff, you gain stuff. Just see it as a recalibration, okay? Uh, so start to get super organized. One of the tools I use, um, and it's always in flux and it changes all the time. I'm like, that's not working, this is working. Is, uh, it's, oh, thanks Amy. Um, is a, um, go use Google Calendar. I use Google Calendar and I, ta and I sync it with my phone. And what I do, and if anyone needs help with that, let me know, because if you're not a techie, things like that can seem scary, but it's not scary at all. And what I've done is like, I've linked that up to my Calendly and I have given myself, okay, this is work time. This is content creating time. I'll talk about this a bit more in a minute, but um, use time blocking. So you can go like 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. is me time. And I'm gonna shut that door and I'm gonna do yoga, that type of thing, just time block. And it's not, you're not going to nail it first time. Like my rituals and routines, they always need a lot of tweaking. But time blocking and Google Calendar is awesome for that, okay? So get organised was that tip. Okay, so let's go on to my rituals and routines. One sec. The rituals and routines that are working for me now. I'm holding my phone. Sorry, it keeps drifting into the YouTube video. <laughs> I'm holding it because the connection was poor. So I think it's, easy, it's better if I hold it. Uh, so Monday to Friday, like I say, is fairly. I'm fairly firm on Monday to Fridays, uh, and at the weekend I do like to roll with it. Uh, a tip is for me, this worked really well. You guys know I'm an essential oils business person. That's my biz. That's one of my part of my business. I anchor my routines and rituals. I'll give you an example here in essential oils. So these are my two favorite work oils. That's in tune for focus, and that's motivate for motivation. 
Um, and what the one of the reasons that helps is because it hacks into your limbic system in your brain. And so you're creating a positive memory that's attached to that activity. So instead of yoga becoming like, oh, yoga, I can't be bothered to do it. It's become like this amazing, delicious 20 minutes every single day in the week. I don't tend to do it at the weekend because I use these delicious yoga oils and it I can't tell you how much the oils anchor me in the activities and my brain just comes to expect them. So that's just a little tip for you there. Um, okay, so we're gonna start with AM. So AM rituals, I split my rituals into like AM, PM and evening. Some people do midday, but I do AM, PM and evening. Um, and we're gonna start with one that's really gross, but it's just an example of something you can do <laughs> you're like oh my god what's this gonna be <laughs> it's uh, tongue scraping and I don't do it every single day and I've only recently started doing this I sometimes forget but it's a re again going back to Ayurveda there's a book that I will recommend at the end and, it, and it's a Ayurvedic medicine is all about rituals it's beautiful and then um, tongue scraping gives you a really good indicator of where your health is at okay um, and if your tongue is showing like lots of coating on it or different colors it can be a really good indicator of of health problems that you've got okay so tongue scraping then warm water with lemon oil in so not hot water not cold water in again in ayurveda they really believe in starting the day with something warm to just ease up your system you don't want to put the fire out in your digestive system so you don't have a cup of cold water uh, and I put some lemon oil in that as well which is super cleansing I try and have two of those most of the time it's just one let's be real because I'm like I want some food now some coffee <laughs> um and then I meditate I de I tried attributing exact times to these but it was too rigid so I now just as long as I do them sometimes it's first sometimes it's after getting stand up sometimes it's after breakfast sometimes it's before ideally it's before I meditate I use Gabby Bernstein's meditations you can go onto her website and buy them by the album I recommend doing that with uh, I recommend reading like Spirit Junkie Super Attractor they all have matching meditation albums and I just reuse the meditations all the time they're about eight minutes long I use an oil it's a beautiful part of my day. And then I journal afterwards. So journaling for me has been an amazing intentional practice that helps massively with manifesting. And when I talk about manifesting, for me, that's, I'm a big believer in like the oneness of our lives. So for me, manifesting, I'm always thinking about my business. I'm always thinking about my family and I'm always thinking about my wellness. So uh, I highly recommend that. It's such a brilliant practice to do every single day. When I don't do it, I notice I am so less intentional in my in my daily things that I go about doing. Uh, then I love this Ayurvedic practice. I'm not keen on the tongue scraping, but I love this one and it's body brushing. Um, and body brushing is awesome. And it's something you can do super quick and it's just light strokes uh, towards your heart. I always get that mixed up, I think it's towards your heart and then clockwise circles on your tummy. And what that does, it's great for lymphatic drainage. But for me, I just find it like a moment to like, just take physical, actual care of myself. It's great for drainage. It's great for stimulating your blood. Your blood flow is good for like, stuff like cellulite and stuff. But I just do it mainly because it wakes you up. You can use a bit of oil for that or you can just do it completely dry. Uh, and then I put balance oil on my feet. I get ready. And I go, some other stuff that you could add in there is like some sweaty exercise. That's something I am missing from my rituals and routines at the minute. I'm working on it. Um, you could do an you could get, get up extra early and do an hour's reading or do a course that you've always wanted to do. Okay, so in the PM, um, so I, I go to work in the morning. That is my work time. And I'll talk more about that in one second. Um, so I'm covering my wellness stuff kind of first and then I'll do kind of work stuff. Um, I tend to do an afternoon walk in the afternoon uh, if I can because that is the time when I fall want to fall asleep and that has really helped doing a little walk about half two just kind of takes me over that period where I'm like I'm dying and I need to go to sleep here um, and if you're the same I highly recommend that. So some other ideas that you could do in the afternoon is a quick meditation, a quick bit of kundalini breath work. Again that sounds super complicated and stuff but it's really really not. Um, I can share some links to that and you can Google them on YouTube. It's so, so quick. There's things called like the dragon breath, which are just gonna oxygenate your entire system instead of reaching for that afternoon coffee, which is gonna affect your sleep. Don't drink coffee after 12 p.m. We covered that in the sleep chat. 
Um, but I, that's a real important one and something I've had to learn the hard way. <laughs> Um, so in the evening, this is really important to me to have an evening routine and it starts actually at like half six. I do daily yoga. I couldn't recommend Glow highly enough. G-L-O. Elena Brower, who is actually my mentor, she is, um, has some incredible, uh, yoga practices on there. Yoga for self-care, beautiful program on there. I only do yoga for like 20 minutes, max half an hour. I find it too boring otherwise. I've got a very low attention span. <laughs> so I do my yoga at half six. And then when I go to bed, which tends to be between nine and 10, probably about half nine, uh, I know that I will be turning my lights off between 10 and half 10, okay? Uh, I, I do my gratitude journal, which takes two or three minutes. It's a beautiful close to the day. And then I read and I tend to do all my kind of, growth reading around then so i will do stuff that links into my business and my life i don't find that an issue but if you find that an issue and it too sparks you off too much read something really relaxing either read a real book or a kindle because kindle have the anti blue light thing so it's not going to trick your mind that it's daytime uh, and and do the whole chemical thing that it does when it so that's why you don't look at your phone at night put your phone away from about 6 p.m uh, it will absolutely mess with your sleep. It's one of the biggest reasons that people aren't getting enough sleep because it, you're, when you look at the phone, it's got blue light and it tricks your brain into thinking it's daytime and it's producing a chemical to actually keep you awake. I can't recommend uh, an eye mask and earplugs enough. And obviously I use my oils for bedtime. I tend to use a lavender based oil and also vetiver, which is a sedative and it's absolutely incredible on the soles of your feet. So some ideas there for evening routines. I don't make my breakfast up for the next day or my lunch for the next day, but I did um, a coaching session with someone this week and that would really work well for them. Uh, you could make overnight oats before you do your yoga or you could do it just before you go to bed. You could do your lunch or something like that. Another couple of really nice things to do before bed are the legs up the wall, which is a bit of a yoga thing, really great for lymphatic drainage. And also if you want to do yoga, but you don't want it to be kind of exercise, then Yoga Nidra, N-I-D-R-A, is amazing for restorative, um, just a rest. And I think also if you, if you are struggling in the day, you had a bad night's sleep, a bit of Yoga Nidra at lunchtime on your lunch hour or something like that can be wonderful as a boost for the afternoon it's almost as restful as actual sleep uh, again on yoga glow they have loads of yoga nidra on youtube they have loads of yoga nidra so let's talk about work so we mentioned time blocking before um i noticed how i'm going way over time here <laughs> that always happens uh time blocking use google calendar to sync up with your phone if you're self-employed link up to calendly as well uh, so what you're doing with that is um, time blocking, kind of what you'll do is align. If you know that you're most creative and you're most alive uh, at 10 a.m. in the morning, do all of your meetings then where, that require you to be alive. And then likewise, if you know you're okay to do your, I call it head down work. If you're going to do your head down work in the afternoon, that's probably a good time to program it in. What I'm saying here is don't do all your head down work in the morning if you, you're wasting that really attractive energy that you have uh, if you are like me and you do best in the morning when you connect with people so what I do is I put all of my connection stuff meetings and coaching and things like that in the morning so really thinking about your work routine in alignment with uh, your energies and your natural state of being. Again, this align this um, is in line a lot with like the Ayurvedic way of working and whatever your dosha is. Um, so <clears throat> I know that I'm best in the morning and that's when I program that type of stuff in. Uh, my oils, I, I've just mentioned them, I use Motivate and Intune, amazing for focus at work. Um, I get really tired in the afternoon, like I've said, so I'm just moving it around so I can read this. <laughs> uh, I use an oil called Adaptive, Peppermint and Grapefruit are amazing for like zinging up your energy in the afternoon. Um, the biggest lesson that I've had for me recently in terms of work-life balance is I had to realise that I, ha I I really was missing a programme. I was missing time in my weekly schedule to programme in 
uh, my home stuff. And so it's really important to me that I feel like I am balanced at home. Uh, so what I actually did was very, and it's very, very hard to do this, uh, because, and that's to do with sabotage and personal boundaries. But what I do now is on a Monday morning, I do batch cooking, meal planning, laundry. Um, we also have someone that helps with cleaning. That is not possible for everybody. But what you could do, and we've had times and it's not been possible for us. I completely get it. Um, at the minute we do that because my time is spent better spent working. So that might be the case for you. And please remove all guilt if that is the case. Um, so what I do is I spend my Monday morning and then my Thursday morning on house stuff. What was happening before I did that, before I acknowledged that I needed to do those two things was I was springing from one side to the next. I was like, I've got to spend every single minute with, a, with the childcare minute on work. So that's what I did. And so I would neglect all of the stuff all around me with three kids and a gazillion animals. It's a lot. Um, and then I would think, oh my God, my house is chaotic. I can't work and go back to that. So I would swing wildly from one extreme to the other and swinging wildly from one extreme to the other is not recommended, okay? It's not sustainable. And, uh, and you're not uh, in, 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 in alignment with the things that you want to achieve in your life, okay? So just recognize that you need to put time and energy into all areas, excuse me, scratch my nose, all areas of your life, home and work, okay? So for example, I do on a Monday morning, I do my batch cooking and all that stuff. Th Tuesday morning, I do connecting. In the afternoon, I do head down work. That sounds a bit dodgy, doesn't it? Head down work, which is like writing. Um, sorry, lower the tone. And uh, that type of thing. All the creative stuff that I can just kind of, you know, that work, I will do it in the afternoon, okay? Uh, Friday morning, what I, what I realised was um, I have uh, one of my weakest areas is finances and I would allow Adam to shoulder all of that stuff. So what we do now is a really quick meeting on a Friday morning. And this, again, like your rituals and routines don't all have to be about meditation. You, if you realise that one area in your life that you're not stepping up in office in finances put it in the diary it matters so put it in the diary and actually do it how many th times do we say to our partners are we going to do this from now on aren't we and it just never happens you have to put it in your diary a lot of us are very good at planning things and then the follow-through is where we fail um and be the person that says come on sit down we're going to have that finance meeting and that's been really effective um okay that is it guys i've covered all the work and the wellness stuff um some some things just to say in, in summary then. I have um, a printout and it's super simple. It's like rituals, routines, AM, PM, evening. Uh, that's in my Instagram bio. I'll link to it in the YouTube comments as well. Um, I've also put together a load of stuff that I've mentioned. I've put it in an Amazon link. Um, obviously that's an affiliate link. If you choose to buy from that link, I own a very small commission <laughs> you don't have to it's fine but all the things i've mentioned on here the ayurvedic self-care handbook amazing very accessible that's in there the dry body brush stuff like that um an instant pot which is really good on your batch cooking days things like that uh lastly um please join my conscious self-care group on facebook um we do a lot of stuff we do live coaching on a wednesday at 11 we have daily self-care prompts and all that jazz I've gone over time. I wanted to do 20 minutes and it's 33. Never mind. Thank you so much for joining me and feel free to message me directly on any platform to talk about any of the things that we've, we've discussed in this. And I hope you have a fantastic day and thank you so much for joining me, guys. Love you all. Bye. Bye, guys.